things blocking my scan. Mm. Clank has always traveled in packs. Let's get it closer. Is it Clank is? Or is it something else? This might be where they find out the truth. Zero droids. Mm. Tarkin said insurgents, not droids. Ugh, oh, crosshair. I'm not sure there are. Aww. Shit, the music. Oh, so good. You're Saw Guerrera. Trained by Captain Rex and General Skywalker to fight for the Republic. Oh, shit! Hi! It's been a minute. If we give up now, everything we fought for, everyone we lost, will have been for nothing. I won't let that happen. The Clone War may have ended, but the Civil War is about to begin. <laughs> the old ways are done. You can either adapt and survive, or die with the past. The decision is yours. Beautiful script writing. Oh my god, I got chills. <laughs> but it just shows, like, how, like, out of the loop, um the squad 99 is because like you know they only know like little bits of it they don't understand like the amount of like like um what's the word betrayal that civilians and the republic fighters feel because like you know again like i said before like they've been fighting for who knows how long i don't know the estimated years but it's been a long time and you know fight like with the fact that and, you know, to civilians and to fighters, it's like, oh my god, they struck down the Jedi because, like, that's what everyone knows. Like, the clones and the Jedi work together to protect the galaxy. But, you know, now that that's broken, it's so easy to get to the civilians and take over everywhere and destroy every resistance that there is. So it's very interesting and just, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, like, the reactions like un like as we're unveiling the truth of shock uh, yeah. troop ninety nine. I'm just saying troop ninety nine because it's like a long ass name. Their real name. So I'm saying troop or squad ninety nine. So if I say it wrong, I apologize. But squad ninety nine. Like it's gonna be interesting, especially because Echo already has like we've seen so much like insight into what's happened. Um, apart from squad ninety nine, so he knows a little bit, but he doesn't know a lot. So it's gonna be interesting, especially for Echo, who's seen that side of the war, for him to get that insight and see. I'm excited to see all their reactions, but oh, it's gonna be good. The mission. Wake up, Crosshair. They sent us to eliminate innocent civilians. Except they're innocent. What's wrong with you? Me. I'm following orders. Exactly. Those insurgents are plotting against the Emperor. But if you don't have the stomach to do what- Oh, you shit. Disobeying orders again over a kid. Bad play, Hunter. Get lost, Crosshair. She's one of us. We're not leaving her there. Crosshair. Think about your morals, mate. <laughs> oh, I hate him! <laughs> same voices like Rex and stuff so it's just like it's like you're playing with my emotions why you came back for me that's right or you can stay on Camino if uh... no it's like I said before I want to go with you <laughs> touching <sighs> good soldiers follow orders every choice you no make. I think he's he has a defect but he's mostly there Crosshair is like more close to clone than a defect. Ah oh, yeah. His head's hurting. Oh no. Oh, are they gonna turn him into like the perfect clone? Which means the order will go off? Oh no. Can you intensify the program? Yeah. Oh no. Yep. Oh no. I don't think we'll have to go far. Oh, 
Oh, shit! That's the guy! No, because in the trailer, when the teaser came out, me, Mitch, and Alex thought that it, poss it was a possibility that Cody could be involved in the series. I'm guessing he might be involved in the Obi-Wan series, which would be really cool if, if it happens. Um, <coughs> but, oh, that's such a twist! Like, oh, no! But anyway... Oh my god. The tension. Oh my god. Whoa. Whoa. Oh. oh my god. Oh, Rekka! Yes, Omega! <gasps> oh, Jesus. Prime oh. Minister. Shit. I think the Prime Minister knows he let- she let them go. Oh. Oh, it's so sad. Oh! <laughs> Oh, so cool! Shit! Oh my god! Lovely! Oh, crap. That was incredible. What a first episode to start us off! That's nuts! That was such- oh, the, the tension and the tone of the show has already been set. This is exactly what happened with Clone Wars, and already, you know that there's shit that's gonna go down. <laughs> there were so many, like, moments of, like, PTSD, um, uh, because of the fact that, you know, like, it's, um, you know, Order 66, and then, <clears throat> sort of, like, Seeing the reactions of, like, Squad 99 and seeing, like, how they react to it is also very interesting because, again, we as the audience know so much information about this. We know, like, like, everything that's gone on. We understand what's going on, but they don't. They just think, like, oh, like, the... Like, the bad guys have fallen, but then we're suddenly called the Empire, and then they think that they're going after Clankers, but in reality, they're going after, like, you know people who were part of the Republic fighters, or, you know, more Jedi, more Padawans, stuff like that. So now they're starting to see the bigger picture, and I'm guessing throughout the rest of the season, we're going to see that realisation come to fruition until they realise, like, the extent. And I wonder if they're going to run into, like, any other clones, because obviously we know from Rebels that Rex went and found Wolf. Who else did he find? He found a few other clones, I can't remember off the top of my head. But we've seen that Rex has obviously found clones, so I'm wondering... I, hmm, that's what I'm wondering, if they do find Rex, or if they find Wolf or something like that. Is, are they going to be already, like, turned back to normal, or are they going to be, like, um, still the same? So obviously, in that Order 66 sort of mindset. Um, ugh. But goddamn, the memories. Um, already, let's talk about, like, cinematography and animation first before we get more into the in-depth of the story. This is the best Clone Wars or, like, just animation from Star Wars and Disney that we've ever seen before. This looks so beautiful. And we this was sort of, like, what we saw in the last three episodes of the last season of Clone Wars. Those last three episodes... If you put them in movie length, like, all three of them, it's, like, a beautiful film. It's so good. And this was, that was the tip of the iceberg. This is, like, what we're seeing now. And obviously, as I said at the beginning, I did say, like, this is probably what was worked on during COVID. I know that the idea of Bad Batch was brought up and, obviously, was told during, um the end of the last season of Clone Wars. So the fact that they've worked on this during COVID and gotten this level of, like, that well done, like, oh, like, round of applause to you guys, like, Disney, Dave Filoni, as usual, bringing it back, 
oh, so, so good. And oh, it's just so good to be watching Star Wars again. But anyway, um, more to do with the story. Um, Crosshair. So let's talk about him. I was... I was thinking he was going to turn bad. Either they were going to turn him bad or he was going to betray them. But in a way, it's interesting because, it, like, I feel like the guys probably thought that um, in after the fight that he may have betrayed them. But in reality, he obviously was taken advantage of and they just increased the inhibitor chip, which is so sad and just... Because obviously, like, and there were signs, like, good soldiers follow orders and stuff, but it wasn't to the extent of, like, the other clones that we've seen. For example, maybe, like, Fives. Fives went off, obviously, a little bit earlier than everyone else's, but it's not to the extent of Fives, like, going to attack people, going to kill and just, like, destroy. So, <clears throat> it's really sad and just, like, oh... It breaks my heart because it's just like it's so sad and just like I I don't like Crosshair. I never liked him in Clone Wars, and that's why in this I was like, ugh, like I hate him. But I do like him, um, and I do feel sorry for him, um, and I feel bad because he was taken advantage of. And I'm gonna like I'm trying to think of what's gonna happen next. Anyway, back to the story. Ah, oh, I Omega. We need to talk about her because. Throughout this episode, I noticed that, and I think a lot of people will notice it, that she was very much, like, replicating a lot of Hunter's, like, moves. So, like, I feel like she may have, like, a deeper connection to him or something. Um, whether it's sort of, like, maybe they used his particular DNA or, like, even though it's the same thing. But maybe, like, his personality, not personality, but maybe sort of, like, pulled off of him sort of thing. I'm not sure. But... It just seems like, or she's very good at replicating moves, or she can sort of, she's, what's that, what's that word? Clairvoyant. Or she might be clairvoyant, so she can, like, sort of, like, um, like, think of the moves before a person does it, or, like, you know, she's, she obviously heard, like, or sort of, like, sensed that, um, Crosshair was close. So I'm guessing she's clairvoyant, and she probably has also, like, maybe the same thing that Hunter has, which is, like, the, like, uh, what's it called? um, enhanced, like, hearing and, like, sensing of the, like, um, area, etc. So I think that's sort of, like, the same as him. So she might have the same abilities as he does. But, um, she's a very interesting character. I didn't know it was a girl because I didn't watch the trailer. I just saw a photo and I was like, oh, it's a guy. But I'm glad that was, like, clarified. It was a girl. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. And that's why I was like, that's a clone. It's not just some girl. She looks like a clone, but she's female, um, and that's her defect, unfortunately, um, but I'm, I'm glad, and I'm excited, because I feel like it's gonna be, like, sort of, like, a father-daughter relationship towards Hunter and Omega, or sort of, like, that mentor, um, apprentice sort of vibe between them, so I'm excited, so it's really cute already, and I cannot wait to see that be developed more further, um, oh, it's gonna be really, really good. Hello again. Speaking from another camera because unfortunately I lost um, some space on my SD card and I don't have another SD card. But, as I was saying, um, <clears throat> this first episode was so enjoyable and it sort of broke my heart that it's called Aftermath because obviously there's no more podcast anymore. But, um, it was so, so good. Like, I can't stop saying it. And this is the level. Again, Dave Filoni, dude, he's honestly the reasons, like, Star Wars is still as good as it is. He saved, like, like, the timeline in, essentially. Like, he's fixing the mistakes that happened in the sequel trilogy. You guys gotta, like, agree with me on that in terms of what they're doing with the Mandalorian, because they are. But with this, it's just so good. And I, yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely, like, and it, I think it's a definite answer for everyone that he is going to be, like, the next, like, George Lucas of Star Wars, um, like, when George Lucas passes away, I reckon he's going to be, like, the next in line. He's the apprentice! <laughs> um, so he's going to be either the Sith or the Jedi next. Um, currently, he's the Padawan, but, oh, he's doing such a great job. And I was just scrolling on Twitter while some of the files went over, but it still didn't work for my camera. But as I was scrolling, um, it seems like Everyone's really enjoyed Bad Batch for the first episode. So good. And they, uh, um, critics have already watched the second episode as well. And they're saying that it's just as good as the first. 
I'm very excited to watch when, like, next week when that comes out. Oh, it's such a, no offense, it's such a random time in the week, though, on a Tuesday. But at the same time, it's the best because, oh, Star Wars. And just, oh, it's so good. So, also, people who were talking about um, who they possibly might meet, who this person is, who they're going to go and see. People are saying Rex, but I don't think so because it doesn't make sense because... They wouldn't know where Rex is at this point in time because Rex was with Ahsoka and, you know, they had to go on the run because they had to pretend that they were dead. Um, so I'm guessing it's going to be someone else. I'm not sure. Um, and I'm going to be surprised whenever that happens that we see them. Um, oh, God damn. I'm, I, I do, like... I would be fine if we don't see Ahsoka, because Ahsoka does sort of go on her own journey during this sort of grey area of time. Um, but I also hope that we do see Rex, because I love Rex! But also, like, I also want to know, like, what happened to Cody and all that stuff. Like, whether he survived, whether he's going to be in the Obi-Wan show, maybe. Um, but, yeah, we're going we have to have to wait and see, God damn but again it's going to be interesting because crosshair is now the one chasing after them he's obviously going to be the hunter and they have become his prey um but yeah it's going to be very interesting and obviously they're going to have a massive target on their backs from the empire um and again like I said before, it's going to be interesting how the story unravels and how they react. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give a like, subscribe, comment, and tell me your thoughts on this episode of Bad Batch. Oh, so good. Again, I'm very excited to see more about Omega. A lot of people are loving her character, which I'm really happy to see. Because obviously, with female characters, a lot of people are like, up and down about them. I was immediately in love with her. She's such a sweetheart. I cannot wait to see more of her and whether like she gets a stronger relationship with not only Hunter, but the rest of Squad 99. It's going to be really good. But anyway, I'm going to have to end the video here. But thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Crazy Fangirl out.